How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and start our ESXi installs. So we're gonna start out by installing ESXi 6.0. I'm gonna walk you through the entire process. Obviously, I'm gonna skip anything that's like, you know, not interesting. But all the things that you need to know in order to get the ESXi server up and running, I'm gonna walk you through all those processes. And then I'm gonna, in the following video, you'll come back and you'll see that there'll be five additional hosts. I'm not gonna waste your time to showing you how to deploy each and every one because the process is literally the same. Once you've installed 6.0 or 6.5 or 6.7, the syntactical, the, the process is the same no matter which version of ESXi you're installing. It's the user interface and how you log into it will change and I'll show you that individually as we move forward. But for right now, that's where we're at. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of the way and we're gonna click on create new virtual machine. I'm gonna click next. And then this drop down uh, line here, we have a whole bunch of options here. I'm actually gonna go grab 6.0 right here. And I'm gonna click on next. Click next. And then I'm gonna choose the location to install it. I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to create a new virtual machine. I'm gonna say this is gonna be ESXi 6.0-1. I'm gonna click on okay. And then this is gonna be ESX i 6.0-1 click next and i'm going to give it a 40 gig hard drive i'm actually going to bump that up to um 100 for right now because of the by default with 40 but 100 is going to be what i allocate to it oh and this a split virtual a store virtual disk is a single file versus split virtual disk into multiple files this basically just means that when you go through the process of allocating storage space and how the virtual machine file system or VMFS actually goes through and starts to allocate space on the hard drive, the top option, store virtual disk as a single file, basically will go in on whatever the storage is that you're creating this 100 gig file on. You know, if you have a 100 gig hard drive or like you go out and you get a 100 gig SSD and you plug it into your machine, then and then you allocate to all of it, it's going to store up all the space. So, and then it'll allocate that entire uh, area, the entire space for it. Where if you do it and it's built into virtual multiple disks, what you're basically doing is you're taking that same 100 gig hard drive space that you want to use but you're carving it up into multiple little sections. So let's say you break that up into 50 virtual two gig drives. So as things need to be written, then they're written, but the space is allocated, but it was only actually taken up in two gig chunks as things need to be written. So if you don't need to be written, if you only write six gigs of data, you still have 94 gigs open. We're gonna go ahead and click next and we're gonna customize the hardware real quick. So in here, I'm gonna go give this guy 16 gigs of RAM. Processor-wise, I'm gonna give it a second core. And then on the network adapter, I'm gonna come here to bridged and do this. So right now, I'm not gonna do anything uh, advanced networking-wise, because we'll come talk about that when it comes to networking, which will be after we get the all the hypervisors deployed. We'll talk, come back and talk about networking at a later point in time. I'm gonna click on close. And I'm going to check the box for power on this virtual machine after creation and click on next. So it's going to go ahead and turn on the VM as soon as it deploys it. It's going to take a couple of seconds for it to do that. And then we're going to go through the install process of ESXi. So give that a couple of seconds to load. And now we are in the loading ESXi installer. So this is basically just a hurry up and wait process. So as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on here other than loading files. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video until we are at a point in time. I'll show you actually the next loading um, page once it pulls up. This is the next portion of the install process. So we're gonna be loading the installer. So as you can see, it knows that it's ESXi 6. It knows it's VMware. I'm not exactly sure why it says VMware 7.1. Uh, it shows the CPUs and it shows the amount of RAM that's been allocated to the box. And we're going to go through and hurry up and wait. I do want to point out that when you get to the VMFS, I'm sorry, the NFS 4.41 uh, 
loading, you'll uh, you'll see this right here for NFS. 4.1 client loaded successfully. This one takes a little bit. Don't think that the installer has seized up or anything. Just uh, give it some time and let it f fully boot up and I'll bring you guys back in here in just a moment. All right, so when we get to this point here, we're ready to start the actual install. So I'm gonna click in here and hit the enter key. And then you have the end user license agreement. I'm gonna go ahead and press F11 and then go through this process. So this will take a couple of minutes. It's actually looking for a hard drive or storage device to actually install to. And fortunately for us, we have found the 100 gig hard drive. I'm gonna hit the enter key and then select the keyboard layout and I'm gonna type in the password. It could be any arbitrary password that you, of your choosing. And then hit the enter key again. And momentarily we will be in good shape once it goes through and make sure that everything's working. So let's checking on things like, is the right, is the right amount of CPU applied, the right amount of RAM, so on and so forth. Once this is done, we will go through and it'll ask us if we actually really want to install ESXi and the answer will be yes. So we'll have to issue F11 one more time and then it'll actually go through the actual install. So we are again in a hurry up and wait. So that infamous pop-up I was just talking about pops up and basically it's saying that we're going to install ESXi 6.0 on this specific HBA or host bus adapter which is basically going to be our 100 gig hard drive. I'm going to press F11 to install and then it's off to the races. Okay so the install went well as you can see. It took about five minutes or so for the install to kick off. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the enter key to reboot and then it's going to boot up from the disk instead of the CD-ROM drive. So we are in good shape there. We're gonna go ahead and just let it reboot and when I return, I will show you what it's like to log in for the first time and all that good stuff. So as it says right now, we are done. The, the process to actually go through and install, you're gonna see here it load up it's going to look identical to the inst uh, the installation process that we just walked through. So I'm not going to show you that process again. You've already seen it. So I'm going to pause until we're ready to go. All right. So now that the server is booted up, we need to go actually in here and get the configuration in place. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up our spreadsheet. And so this guy should have the IP address of 10.255.1.60. Let's go ahead and apply that. So we're gonna click in here and hit F2. We're gonna come down here and type in the password we set up during the install and hit the enter key. And then after a short period of time, we'll be redirected to the, you know, the menu base wizard. We're gonna come down here to configure management network, enter key there, come down here to IPv4 config, enter key, and then spacebar or uh, I should say uh, arrow down to set static IPv4 address, spacebar to select it, and then uh, air, uh, arrow down to the next entry, 10.255.1.60, and then slash 24 mask, and 10.255.1.1 gateway, and then come down here to DNS configuration. Click in here, and the primary DNS server is going to be 10.255.1.51. Alternate DNS server will be Google. And the host name will be esxi6-1.lab.local. And then we're going to click on OK. And then we're going to escape. That's going to reset the management network. We're going to hit the uh, yes in order to resynchronize, or I should say restart it. And we're coming down here to test management configuration. So we're gonna ping all of this. So we're gonna ping the gateway, which works. We're gonna ping our domain controller, which works. Ping Google, which works. And then we were able to resolve our name through DNS. So that, ladies and gentlemen, means that we are 100% operational. Now the next step is to actually log in and see what's happened. So I'm going to click on Windows 10 here. I'm gonna double click here on the vSphere client and I'm also going to pull up the command prompt. 
So we're gonna come in here and we're type in ping 10.255.1.60 and we should be able to ping that IP. Okay, so I was wondering why I was running into a problem with being able to ping the box and I, it looks like I accidentally configured the wrong IP address. So we wanna make this to be a .60 and not a .69, because that will not work. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the enter key, and then uh, escape out. Yes, we're gonna restart the management network. Test the management network. Do all this real quick. Make sure everything can resolve. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go back to our PC here, hit the up arrow, and the ping works just fine. I'm also gonna ping ESXi 6-1, and that should also resolve. Now it's a DNS lookup, which is exactly what I want to have. So now I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. I'm gonna double click on the vSphere client because that's what we need to have in order to connect. And we're gonna type in uh, ESXi 6-1. This is why I wanted to validate DNS was working. And then root, and then the password. So if I've done everything correctly, we should get this little pop-up. I'm gonna say, yes, install the certificate, and then ignore. And we should be in good shape. Now, I will preface that you don't have to do the DNS entry. In most cases, I don't. For example, here I am, I point on my local ESXi server, I point to the, the IP address because I don't have DNS set up in my network to do that. I don't really care. So. Here, I can click on OK, and then I'm logged into ESXi 6-1 through the vSphere client, and everybody is happy-go-lucky. If we look at the top of the screen here, we can see ESXi 6-1.lab.local. If we look here on this guy, we can see that we are localhost.local domain. Not very intuitive, right? So by having it set up on this one, we can see what we have running and everything that's operational with it, and we're in good shape. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come up here to the view and then, I'm sorry, edit, client settings, and I'm going to uncheck show getting started pages. Or I'm sorry, tabs. I'm gonna click on okay. And that's going to get rid of that tab. And all I'm gonna see is the summary tab and all the other stuff that I need to be care, need to be worried about. In this case here, we're in good shape. That's as far as we need to take it in this video. So. I am a happy camper at this point. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, between this now and the next video, I'm going to deploy the other five hosts. So one more 6.0, two 6.5, and two 6.7. And then we will go through and start talking about the networking stuff. So it'll take a little bit for that to get deployed. So in between now and then, you guys have a nice rest of your day and we'll catch you guys in the next video.